Hola bandidos, ¿cómo estamos? Welcome to Mel's Magic Official. I'm Magic Mel and this is Al, my spirit guide. Welcome to episode 9 of season 8. It is peak summer in Spain and I took the luxury of taking some time off, what, like 11 days? And it did me so good, guys, honestly. I realized, as I shared with you, that a lot of my doing came from an underlying fear of resting, as bizarre as that may sound. What I've learned though over the past months is that the old way of doing things doesn't work anymore, i.e. the overdoing and the pushing and the forcing and the clenching and the controlling. <laughs> We're very much invited to create balance and harmony, as elusive, elusive as that may sound. And what does that look like? It's about connecting with our body in the here and now and the way we feel to gauge what is required in the moment. Our body is our vehicle for ascension. It's not intellectual, it's not conceptual. So the mind might spin its usual story. You have to, you should, you can't, you can't just rest. <laughs> but the body says something different and it's up to us to choose. What do we listen to? We can still go up into the mind and force and push, but then we pay the price, i.e. exhaustion, longer time to recover. The question is, is it worth it? Or is another way of going about things not only possible, but also more enjoyable? The elusive or <laughs> proverbial path of least resistance, going with the flow, flowing where the energy is pulling us. So I spent a lot of time grounding myself in nature with the sea and wow, I feel recharged and I hope you do too, <laughs> wherever you're sitting. Today is the new moon in Cancer as well, so I thought, why not? Let's record a video. But before that, before we pull some cards, I wanted to share a few insights I gathered through experience over the past <laughs> week or two. And you know these things, they're so obvious. You know when someone tells you one of these wise quotes and you're like, okay, I've heard that before. But the difference is when we actually apply it to our own lives or when we've gone through the experience and we've gathered our own wisdom through the experience. Otherwise, the knowing is just abstract. It doesn't serve us. So all of our experiences carry the silver lining and the seed of wisdom. So I learned, it's an obvious one, I can't control anyone else's behavior, but I have a choice whether to engage in someone else's behavior or dynamic they're setting up or not. That's where our power lies. It goes back to how am I feeling? How is this making me feel? If something is being triggered, what is it that is being triggered? And how Am I projecting into the situation, but also how am I showing up and how am I communicating what I need? And is that being reciprocated? Is that being received or not? That's when I can choose. It's a good one. <laughs> Another thing, I guess it's for everyone, YouTube is probably going to ban me here, is to really come back into our body. I don't know. Masculines, feminines, trans, whoever is watching, but really unshaming our bodies, our sexuality. That is so important. For me, this entire process has been one of coming home to myself, i.e. my body also, which is a whole intelligence. And to unshame my feelings, my instincts, my needs. It's all part and parcel of reclaiming 
all of these different aspects of ourselves. And our self is not just one unidimensional thing. We are an ecosystem of all of these different aspects and inclinations and drives from our ancestors, from our past lives, from imprints. And they resurface and it's up to us to look at them, observe them and relate to them. So it's my two cents over the past two weeks. Once we come home to our own energy also, I feel it's easier to be intentional and selective about how we go forward, i.e. what projects we, should, we choose to focus on, how we spend our time and energy with, because coming back home feels so good. Again, the question, who do I let into my space, energetically, physically, is important. In order to be discerning, though, we have to come back to our own energy, our own space first. To recognize where I end and you begin. There's a Radiohead song, so called. It's in the basement, such a dope song, it's really cool. Check it out. So it's my two cents. What have you been up to? <laughs> Let me know in the comments box. So let's pull some cards. I have I've even stopped pulling cards of the last week or so because as with any anything it can get especially if you're someone like me who's very curious and interested in all of these different topics it can become an obsession and then there is a peligro there is a danger of getting maybe dependent on a tool on whatever it is that is only supposed to be a tool and not a way for us to disempower ourselves again. So I stopped the whole card thing also for 10 days and it's been good. So new moon in Cancer, planting new seeds. Let's see what the witches have to say. Yes, still recording. Connecting with our Asga team, angels, spirit guides, ancestors, gods and goddesses, triple G. What message do you have for you watching on the other end of the screen? What energy is coming in with this new moon in, gem in Cancer? Thank you so much. What is the main energy that is arriving? Let's see. I love these witches. Ah, oh, those too many. They're small and handy. I'm going to I'm going to Madrid tomorrow. And Magic Mel has been a bit of a hermit over the past few years. I've become a real village person <laughs> in a good sense. So traveling is that's gonna be fine. It's funny that it's coming from someone who's traveled the world. But yeah, it's gonna be nice for a change. Only for a few days. Don't worry, I'll be back. <laughs> Okay, focus. Main energy we're calling in with this new moon in Cancer. One more. Okay. Okay, first card. Wait a second. Oh, actually, wait. These are the ones that fell out and they're upside. They're, they're uncovered. I want to take them. I'm going to shuffle a bit more. How's your connection with your intuition, guys? Are you trusting your inner knowing, your inner voice more? Hope so. It's your guidance system, remember. No more outsourcing of authority from outside. It's tapping back into your own shaman, your own sage. Okay, one more. There we go. Wow, that is crazy. We've had this card last time we pulled a reading. It's justice. Last time, though, it was in the reverse. So 
Justice Upright. It's a major arcana card. If you look at her closely, she's a quite an imposing figure. No? She looks a bit stern with the sword in one hand and the scales in the other. Red, the color of passion, green, abundance, purple, spirituality, and the two columns. It's almost like she is guarding the passage. You have to <laughs> graduate through justice before you can step into the next phase of your journey. So justice is about bringing balance into our lives, about taking accountability for our choices, for the way we, like I said, show up for others, but primarily for ourselves. So have you been bringing things back into balance? Since our last reading, remember, where justice was in the reverse and definitely in the reverse, it asked us to look at where are we not in balance, energetically, mentally, where are we disempowering ourselves? Where have we accumulated some karma or haven't dealt with certain karma? How can we bring the scale back in balance? That requires honesty, you know? Honesty with ourselves. Again, the body is a good guide in this procedure because we know, we can feel when something is off, when something feels off, when you're out of alignment. I mean, the basic thing being tiredness. Okay, if you're constantly tired or constantly stressed, why is that so? Which part of your life, which, which aspect of your life is causing that stress and why do you really need that? Is there another way? So justice is an invitation to look deeper and to investigate how to bring balance into our lives. Because after all, harmony is not possible if we're not in balance. And it's a dynamic thing, nothing is ever static. But check in with yourself. How are you feeling now, honestly? Do you feel in some way out of balance? And I mean, going back to basics, if the body is not feeling well, it will affect the mind, although it's all connected. I don't, you know, the, the mind-body complex is one system. But if you're feeling off, ask yourself why. Is there something that you're denying? Is there something that you need to balance? You know internally. Ask yourself some questions. Hmm? So that's the main energy. What else can we ask? I only want to pull three cards from here. What is the biggest challenge with this new moon in Cancer? Thank you so much. What is the biggest challenge? Okay. The biggest challenge is the Eight of Pentacles. So the Eight of Pentacles, if you look closely, there is this lady. Let me look also. <laughs> there is this lady polishing her pentacle. pentacle. The suit of pentacles is all about money, the material world, our... I'm a little bit wary of the word achievement. But let's say our craft or our purpose. Here she is at nighttime with a candle lit, a book in front of her, and she's paying attention to her pentacle, taking care of it, polishing it. So the next one in line would be the Nine of Pentacles, which is already fulfillment. On the way to the Nine of Pentacles, being in the Eight of Pentacles, it invites us to hone our craft, to appreciate what we have, what we already have. You know, there is this YouTube, not YouTube, <laughs> YouTube song, Beautiful Day. There was a verse or a line that really struck me. It was, one second, let, let me remember. 
What you don't have, you don't need it now. What you don't know, you can feel somehow. <laughs> so it's this notion that appreciating what we already have, knowing, yes, that we're not there yet, where we perhaps want to be, but can we be satisfied where we are right now with this step of the journey? Can we let go of having or postponing our sense of fulfillment until we get there? Can we enjoy every single step, every single pentacle on the way? And the pentacle, again, can be about anything. Are you appreciative of what you have now? Knowing that what you don't have now, you don't need right now. <laughs> So it's inviting a sense of contentment and satisfaction with where you are and how you are right now. It's liberating. It's letting go of this resistance of going after things, of being happy here. Why not? And for that, it invites us to take stock of how far we've come on our journey and how blessed we've always been. Gratitude. The key word, no? So pick stock and be grateful for, you are, for where you are right now, regardless of the circumstances. And funnily enough, once you're grateful <laughs> for where you are right now, more good stuff comes because it's the law of attraction. It opens up the pathway of receiving more because you're signaling to the universe, hey, I'm happy with this and this and this. And the universe is like, okay, cool. I'm going to give you more of it. <laughs> Voila. So I said I was going to pull another card, but okay, maybe I'll do. And maybe, because I want to pull a three-card reading of this deck, which you know always creates a little beautiful short story. But maybe another, another video. I don't want to do these videos too long. Okay, one more. So we had main energy, challenge, and what is your deepest, your soul's desire? Because there's our 3D... <laughs> And there's our higher self, our soul aspect. So what is the deepest longing of your higher self, of your soul? In the current energies. Thank you so much, the Aspect team. See, when I say thank you, I signal that I've already received the message. And it just makes everything easier. Oops. Okay. What was my question? What was my question? Oh. What is it that your soul wants? Wow. This, your soul, your higher self, wants to call in the energy of the Queen of Wands. And this is for anyone, regardless of your gender. You know, we, have, we can connect to all of these frequencies. It's time that we look at... Yeah, energies for what they are, even our inner masculine and feminine, they're just different types of energies, like plus and minus, one not being more important than the other, actually one needing the other for it to exist. So back to this, Queen of Wands, she's the queen of passion, look at her, on her velvet, in her velvet dress, with her cat on her lap, she's chill, sunflowers behind her and with her happiness, flourishing, thriving, her wand, passion, if you know what I mean. She's claiming it, she's owning it. So it goes back to what I shared with you about a little bit about my personal experience. Can we allow ourselves, give ourselves the permission of claiming our passion, our body's drives also? I mean, obviously not at the expense of someone else, but really saying, yes, I'm worthy to be satisfied. I'm worthy to... <laughs> I'm worthy to experience passion, to allow that to flow. That's what your soul is asking you to, to embody, to claim, to own. Let's not live in the head only. Let's bring our being into our body right here, right now. Because that's what distinguishes us from the spirit world, <laughs> to be incarnate. I know it's not easy, but at the end of the day, it is a gift. And trust me, there's so many times when I've struggled that I remind myself, 
Magic Mail remembered as a gift in the bigger scheme of things to be here. And yes, it's fleeting. I always also tell myself, you know, when these tensions and struggles arrive, I mean, at some point I was like, well, I'm going to die anyway, so what's the point? But then again, this version of you is, has never existed before and will never exist again. You are a unique incarnation with a unique perspective, with a unique constellation and, and cocktail of influences. Like, Magic Mel is never going to exist again in this shape or form. That's why I'm like, okay... <laughs> This is going to end, but why not make the most of it? Let's look at it that way. Why not embody or fulfill or go after our highest potential? Since this incarnation is fleeting anyway. Hmm? So, claim your worthiness, your embodiment, your pleasure, your passion. Yeah? And express it. And enjoy it. How about that? I'm going to leave it short and sweet. And leave another episode, episode 10, for... Short story. You ready, guys? In any case, I hope you are enjoying the summer too, wherever you are. If you want a private tarot reading, you know I do them. I'm posting the details in the description box below. And I'm happy we're back. <laughs> Did you miss me? Come on, admit it. <laughs> I missed you guys. So I'm sending you a huge hug, lots of good vibes, and see you for episode 10 with a beautiful short story coming up. Ciao. Bandidos.